Well, it seems like from Tim Russert and now to Adam Ziegler, some of the great observers of the po political world are from Buffalo. Well, I, I think it's part of our culture. I mean, um, you know, I grew up with Tom Tolles and, you know, as an editorial cartoonist and watching Tim Russert and meet the press. And I think it, it speaks to the type of community we have. Um, we're just, we're engaged. Um, we, we really just kind of embrace each other. And I think it, once you're born, you kind of, you become a part of that uh, in this community. So I'm just, I'm really proud to play one, you know, small role in that. And, um, you know, I think to have my community honor me like this, um, the art community of Buffalo, is, is extra special um, because I look up to so many of these people. Well, not only the art community, Pulitzer Prize, you know, you're very humble, but I mean, so many accolades and, you know, some would say it's such a young age. Did, did you think all of this would happen so fast? I did not. I mean, it was, um, it, it was a crazy couple of years. There, there's definitely an intense, um, you know, time where the accolades were coming in. And to me, though, I've always been kind of my own hardest critic, my own worst critic, so to speak, for years. And I put so much pressure on myself that now this crazy year happened. I've been traveling so much. In a way, it gives me a chance to relax a little bit because I'm distracted. And I can focus on my work when I'm working. Um, but it's also a responsibility to carry. To me now, I'm an, I'm an ambassador. I was an ambassador of Buffalo. Now I'm an ambassador of the Pulitzer Prizes. And, you know, it just adds to that responsibility to kind of represent my community in a better way. Well, you take what you do very seriously, and what you said at your acceptance speech was very interesting because you said that, you know, the arts are there to, you know, inspire and, and motivate. Do you consider yourself somebody that, that creates your work so that people will think about whatever it is you're, you're making a cartoon about? I, I do. And in, in, in the acceptance speech, I was, you know, like clear to say that I, I strongly believe editorial cartooning is, is, is truly an art form, even though, you know, many would classify it as journalism, even. But the point is to speak truth to power and to make the reader think, which is exactly what art does, you know, over the course of our history. Um, and, and to do it in a visceral way and an intellectual and conceptual way. So the, the different levels and layers you put into the work really give, you know, adds to the experience um, of the viewer or the reader, so to speak. Well, it seems to me that this year, first of all, I mean, you know, I'm 54, I've seen a lot, but I've never seen anything like this presidential race. I have to believe that for people like you and, and others, anybody in the news media, this is just going to be the biggest open season of what's next. It, it is, but it's, it's, and it's totally historically unique. And, and everybody, a lot of people I talk to and I meet, you know, because I'm a political cartoonist, will be like, oh, this is great, you know, look at, look at how crazy things are. But it's also not, you know, in a lot of ways, because I'm also a citizen and a journalist that wants to do good in the world. And what I'm seeing is also depressing. You know, it's, you want to see our communities and our society sort of thrive, but what's happening is, is, is troublesome. Um, the division that you see and the historic nature of the fact that a candidate can get to this level um, that hasn't had public service. And, uh, you know, the scrutiny that the media gives Donald Trump seems to make him stronger. You know, there's, there's really the dynamic in the last five years has changed in the electorate. And as a political observer, I've, I've seen this. And it's really, it's troubling to a lot of media types because the power they think they have seems to be diminished among a certain type of viewership or readership. And I think that's the challenge with media right now. How do you enact the change you want by speaking truth when that doesn't seem to work? Well, and not only that, but everybody's out there with some sort of a blog or some kind of a social media statement. And, you know, so there's the media and then there's this other world. And, and we all sort of mesh together. It's, it's fascinating to me as somebody who's been in this a long time. It is. The, the level of information out there and the depth of information, it makes it almost challenging for the individual to sift through it. Um, and, and I think that's the responsibility of a journalist, is to try to navigate and be the guide to that person. Well, and uh, speaking of new, brand new worlds, so your wife is expecting, and uh, is this your first ad? It's, it's our second. Um, yeah, we're extremely excited, very blessed. Um, we're, we, you know, we're told it's a girl, so one of each, and we have two weeks to go, so it's um, a, a very exciting time, capping off a, a, an insane year and a half. If you'd like to see more of Adam's work, you can go to adamsiklis.com.